Okay, so to start out, we're going to do a little palpation of the knee so that we're familiar where all these structures are that you're going to need to find. So here I have the subject's uh, left leg. We're going to take a look at the knee. There's the obvious uh, anatomical landmarks we can see right away. So the patella right here uh, and the tibial tuberosity right down here. And those are going to be two major landmarks that you can always see and really be familiar with. It's something that a lot of us notice all the time without thinking about it. So when there are potential gross deformities in for these two spots, they should be pretty noticeable to you as being abnormal or having some sort of abnormal situation going on with the knee. So once we kind of locate these two spots, the next best thing to do is to just put your hands on the, the patient's leg here, your fingers right behind, uh, in kind of the, the popliteal fossa, hamstrings area, and then just put your thumbs right along either side of the patellar tendon. So this nice hard cord here. Once you stick your, your thumbs right into here, you're now at the joint line, okay? You're right under the apex of the patella. So here's the top part, here's the apex. My thumbs are on either side of that. And so now I can really feel the joint space nicely because I'm right in that joint line. And this is going to be your ultimate reference point any time that you're evaluating the knee. You can always come back to the joint line and find everything that you're looking for. So from here, I can move my thumbs downward, and this is my tibial plateau that I'm feeling right here. I can move my fingers upwards, and now I'm feeling the condyles of the femur, along with the patella itself. This space is going to be where you're going to have some swelling if you have meniscal tears. Uh, you're going to get swelling here as well with cruciate ligament tears that are inside the joint capsule. This is where you'll have swelling. So if you do have a situation like that, you won't have this nice defined knee area here. And when you put your thumbs in there, it'll be very squishy, full of swelling. From here, we can move our way down. Now we're on the tibia. And I can start to feel, like on this side here, the medial flare of the tibia. So remember, it, is, it comes up and makes a plateau. So if I come here and I feel right in here this medial flare, this is where our pes anserine is. So this is going to be the insertion site of our gracilis, whoops, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong side, medial side here. Medial side here, I'm going to feel that flare, and that's going to be the insertion site of our semitendinosus, our gracilis, and our sartorius, so the pes anserine. The flare on the lateral side is a little bit more of a prominent bump. This is going to be where your Gertie's tubercle is. So if you want to use another landmark to find these landmarks, you come down, so here's my tibial tuberosity. To the lateral side, we're going to find Gertie's tubercle. To the medial side, pes anserine. Coming back up into the joint line now, I can feel the tops of the tibial plateau, and then now I can move either laterally or medially in an attempt to find the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament. So looking for the lateral collateral ligament, I can come around and feeling in the joint space, and I start to feel a point where my thumb's not really sinking into the space anymore. I can drop down and I can find the fibular head right here. So we know that the fibular head does not articulate with the femur. So I can drop down and I can feel it. I can even pinch it between my thumb and finger and move it slightly. And I know that my lateral collateral ligament attaches there. So I can come up from there and start to feel this nice thick cord here on the knee. Be careful because there is another thick band that shoots off this way, which is going to be your biceps femoris tendon, and you can feel that here as well too. But we've become at 90 degrees 
of, an, of a knee angle, we can feel that lateral collateral ligament. And if we move the subject's knee back and forth, we can actually feel the ligament quite well on either side. The medial side, same thing, find your joint line, move over to the medial side here. And you, same thing, you'll start to feel less of a prominent joint line, more of like a thicker band of sorts that's stopping you. Okay, and then again, we can move that knee and we can feel that ligament underneath there relaxing and tightening as we move the knee around. Okay, so there you have it. This is how you should orient yourself or I guess a way that's easier to orient yourself with the knee. Find those landmarks that are you're really familiar with and are comfortable finding and then once you find those landmarks use those landmarks to find other less obvious anatomical spots on the knee. When you're palpating, if you're having pain in any of these areas, such as pain over the medial collateral, lateral collateral ligament, now we know that we can move into testing, which I'll show you next.